Before we get into today's Cowboys report, there's this thing going on tonight. You may have heard of it. It's called the Super Bowl. Who do you have winning? Four for the 49ers or C for the Chiefs? Get those votes in for me in the comment section right now. We begin today's show with the latest on a potential return for starting corner Stephon Gilmore. He has expressed interest in re-signing with the Dallas Cowboys, knowing, of course, this is a business and it may or may not go down. Here's what Gilmore told the ticket uh, about a potential return, saying, quote, I want to come back. We can't talk until March, but that's the goal, because I think we do have the pieces to get where we want to go, and I want to be a part of that. They actually can't talk, by the way. It's fine. He's, he was previously under contract, so you can actually negotiate, but that's eh, fine. It doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, Gilmore played a very key role for this Cowboys team in 2023. His numbers over the 17-game season, 55.8% completion rate, or uh, percentage allowed, excuse me. A little high in the yardage. That does tend to happen with these Cowboys corners because they have some of the most targets against them because teams are often down there to throw it. You would think the yardage would be high as a result. The yards per catch, yards per target, though, are much more in like the normal range, so you're not like you're allowing 1,000 yards or whatever. Four TDs. Two interceptions, 13 pass breakups. The Cowboys don't have great proven depth right now in this cornerback room. Now, Trayvon Diggs should be back and healthy. Deron Bland under contract. Beyond that, it's the Sean Wright, Eric Scott, Israel Mukwamu, kind of sort of the safety corner hybrid, and Josh Butler. Not a great grouping. With, with Gilmore and Jordan Lewis both to be free agents, it would be nice to find a way to retain at least one of them. And with what I expect to be more of a man-match-heavy coverage scheme under Mike Zimmer, meaning you kind of keep your outside leverage. If they go downfield, you stay in man. If they go over the middle, do some crosser stuff, you stay in zone. It's a bit of a challenging scheme for corners. I like it. It's a good one when you have smart, talented corners. Diggs is going to fit well because he did a lot of that at Alabama. And Gilmore is a very smart, heady football player. He would also, I think, fit pretty well. Plus, in the event Diggs is slower to recovery or, or to recover from his ACL or whatever, you have three starters. And you don't have to go take someone early, which as of right now, you kind of need to. You don't have enough options at the spot. So do you want Stephon Gilmore back next season? Why for yes and for no, this will be the pinned comment on today's video. We'll put some more conversation to come on it. So if the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and go vote. I would like to keep Gilmore on this team. The money has to be sorted out, to be clear. It is a factor. Gilmore's own comments at his age, you know, the difference between, you know, $5 million and $7 million a year isn't really that impactful. Now, if he wants to go that route, can't say I blame him. Makes your life and for your family and kids easier, you know? But I think he wants to play for a contender. And the Cowboys check off that box. Now, it's not the only thing Gilmore will consider. Moving sucks, of course, as well. But money and getting a decent amount of change, getting what you think is fair value for your services, and playing for a contender, I do think matters. Yeah, I don't think he's going to go back to Carolina, hypothetically. I think that'd be kind of surprising. So the Cowboys, I do think, have a shot to retain Gilmore. But he's not going to get franchise tagged. You know, we'll do a video on that, I'm sure, at some point. The franchise tag will not be used on Gilmore. It would be a wild, reckless overplay. At minimum, I want to keep one of Gilmore or Lewis. I, I don't want to enter the draft with Bland and Diggs and Eric Scott and Sean Wright and some random, no one's ever heard of free agent. They always tend to go. Because that means I got to take a corner early. And I'm, I, there'll probably be a good one there, actually. But... I don't, I don't want to force myself into it. The value is right. Let's do it. But I want to have all my needs filled, and that means I want to keep one of Gilmore or Lewis. I am curious, by the way, how the presence of Mike Zimmer will, will influence things. I mentioned the, the, the likely coverage scheme based on what he did previously, being that man-match coverage. I like man-match. I think it's really good when implemented properly, when you have the right personnel, because it's not an easy thing for corners, because you're not just guarding one guy. You're not just covering your zone. You're kind of doing both, and that makes it challenging. When it works, it's really good. I think Diggs, Bland, and Gilmore could work really well in that type of coverage scheme, but we'll see what Zim tends to want. Maybe he wants to bring back Terrence Newman. Kidding. Also, only kind of, though. Now, today's show is made possible by... I actually am kidding, to be clear. But today's show is made possible by prize picks. I never kid about prize picks. 
It's daily fantasy made easy. You pick two to six player stat projections, more than, less than on those stat projections. And if you do it right, you come out on top. Now, this is your last chance to do a NFL Super Bowl prize picks this season. They've got some freebies like a Patrick Mahomes over or more than less than half a passing yard. Super easy to hit. I'm doing multiple because it's my last chance. And I got all this extra money from the first deposit match. We'll tell you about a little bit here. I got the flex play. So I got to get two out of three of these right here. Christian McCaffrey, more than 18.5 carries. Travis Kelsey, more than 70.5 re uh, re receiving yards. And Rasheed Rice, less than six and a half catches as Cowboys legend Charvarius Ward should match up pretty well against him. That first deposit match I mentioned, up to a $100 first deposit match when you use code CLNS over at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. The link will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. Again, folks, prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS. Let's stick on the coaching staff side here. Adam Dirty is gone. He has landed the Seahawks defensive coordinator gig. So multiple assistant coaches this cycle getting promotions. The Cowboys plan of attack here has basically been, hey, if you are interviewing for a promotion, whether or not you are, whether or not we are required to or not, we will align to that. So they were required to let Dan Quinn interview for the head coaching job, Joe Witt and Dirty for those two DC gigs there. They also have lost Will Harriger. That happened earlier this morning. Uh, uh, to the Panthers, he is their new quarterbacks coach, worked with Dave Canales in Seattle. Uh, as far as I understand, the only promotions that count in the NFL are coordinator to head coach and assistant to coordinator. So the Cowboys could have blocked Harriger if they wanted to. They did not because it was from a quality control offensive assistant role to a quarterbacks coach job. So real promotions, they are allowing. Lateral moves, Al Harris and uh, Lunda Wells, they are blocking. As it sits right now, the assistant coaching staff under Mike Zimmer looks like this. Al Harris is the DB's coach. They blocked him from the room for the commander's gig. Scott McCurley is the linebacker's coach, the longtime McCarthy guy. Cannon Matthews is the assistant DB's coach. Now, Sharif Floyd is the assistant defensive line coach. He got an interview request from the commanders. Could he be a candidate for the current D-tackle job in Dallas? Who knows? Darian Thompson is the assistant linebackers coach. Eric Simonelli is quality control and does some uh, analytic stuff as well. Pete Onegin, quality control slash defensive assistant, also got requested an interview uh, by Dan Quinn. So that could be a, another potential loss on that side of the ball. That would leave several spots open to fill. We'll see how the Cowboys go about doing that with Mike Zimmer. I don't think he's actually signed his contract yet, but at this point, uh, your other top option was adding dirty and he's gone. So they'll, they'll get that done formally, officially, I'm sure, uh, in the not-too-distant future. Now, we will have you covered on all the latest and greatest Dallas Cowboys news, and maybe sometimes the not-so-greatest either. Hit that sub button for more free Cowboys videos right here on the channel. The podcast Parsons allegations are back once again for Micah. He brought on players like C.D. Lamb, Jordan Love onto his show, I want to begin with the C.D. Lambs because I thought that was, of, of all the stuff we've seen from Cowboys players when we're all mad, and I get it, we should be, I thought Lamb's stuff was actually was fairly insightful and, and accurate and truthful and self-reflective as well. Here's what Lamb said after his mom made some anti-negative comments or anti-comments about his, about his quarterback. I have no beef with my quarterback. I love my dog. He knows that. That can definitely lead us to a Super Bowl. He just also needs other leaders. And that's why I'm pointing at myself. I can help him. He's already got so much on his plate. I didn't have the best start to the game. I had a drop. But I also only had two targets. And no, I'm not pointing at Dak. First and foremost, I do got to grow up. There's plenty of ways for me to handle different situations. Me being mad is not one of the answers. I know this. I just feel like that's contagious. I can be more of a leader. I can be more vocal. If I'm going to take this label as being one, there's times where I have to get out of my shell, get out of my comfort zone. I want us to be who we're supposed to be, the number one offense in the NFL. 
Of all of your post-playoff player quotes where you got Tank Lawrence saying that they were tired, which was him uh, not saying what he wanted to because he was going to throw some guys under the bus and he just gave empty platitudes instead. I thought that one, from those from Lamb, were really good. You know, took, took some ownership. Who has taken ownership on, uh, you know, of this team, uh, of these players? Dak did immediately after the game. Micah didn't. Nobody else really has. Landed. I, 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 I greatly appreciate that. But he handled the, the quarterback stuff well. I thought, whether he meant to or not, kind of pulled back the curtains. Like, okay, he only got two targets, but it wasn't matter to the quarterback. Whose fault is that? The players were mad about the, the game plan going in, to be clear. And that's why they got so frustrated, because they said it, they didn't think it was going to work, and it didn't, and they got mad about it. In the end, overall, there's really not much the, any of these players can say that we will like. Because we are correctly and justifiably mad about the playoff result. Thought Land did a good job. We're not all going to be happy about it. Can't say I blame it at all. Now, with that said, Micah, please log off. I am begging you. Uh, I, I, the, the, the actual interview stuff is actually really good. Why are we interviewing Jordan Love? Why are we bringing on the guy that kicked our ass, kicked your ass, and interviewing him. The actual content, by the way, was really good. Like, as, as a non-Cowboy fan, as someone just likes the NFL, the insight we get from Mike is actually super intriguing. And when, and when the Cowboys are rolling and winning, ah, nobody cares. When they're losing, ah, people start to care. Why are you getting in fights with Jersey Jerry? Like, really? Why, why, why are we doing that? Just, just log off sometime. Jordan Lewis, by the way, I didn't seem to like it. Uh, there was a comment made where Jordan Love thought they could attack the corners, and Micah just, Micah basically went, like, with the, oh, yeah, okay. Which is just, like, acknowledging the end of, of the comment from, from Jordan Love. But, it, but, when, but when you go, yeah, sure, after that, it makes it sound like he's taking a shot at his corners. That's not what he was actually doing. But Jordan Lewis was, like, was quote tweeted it, later deleted it, by the way. Why is Stephen A. Smith on, on your show? All he does is troll the Cowboys. Why are you engaging with it? Why? It make, makes for great content. In the end, my concern here is that this might be doing more harm than good. I'm not, I'm not trying to like tell players what they can and can't do in their free time. They're people. They deserve their, to do whatever they want to do to a certain extent, you know, as long as it's not like you know, bad stuff. But it just I don't know how that's going to be, be, be taken in, in, in the locker room. I don't know if it's all going to be great. Like, there's a, like basically, remember what Mike was going to go on Undisputed every day last year? I think the Cowboys kind of poo-pooed that one a little bit because Skip Bayless is a, is, a, is a troll and a clown. I don't, think, I, don't think, I don't think it looks good. I don't. I am a little bit concerned that whether accurate or not, it gives the appearance of not being all in. And I know Micah busts his ass. I, I, that, that, is the, that is the reality. But I just think sometimes it, it's not a great look. And this is how you don't beat the podcast Parsons allegations. So do you like Micah doing his show? One for yes, zero for no. Content is objectively great. It's really intriguing. Sometimes I just don't like the outcome and the end result. What do you guys think? Safe space to comment. One for yes, zero for no.